Welcome to our lecture online. So how do we determine the absolute magnitude of a star? And of course, we have to remember what an absolute magnitude actually means. And so let's go to the left side of the board. And here it's defined the absolute magnitude is equal to the apparent magnitude of a star when the star is placed at a particular distance away from the Earth. Now, of course, we can't physically take a star and move it to that distance and then measure it, but it's imagined. If the star was at 10 parsecs away, what would be the apparent magnitude? And whatever that number is, that is the absolute magnitude of the star. So essentially, it's the measurement of the apparent magnitude when the star is placed at a distance of 10 parsecs. And of course, that's in our imagination, so to speak, realizing that 10 parsec is equal to 32.6 light years because it's 3.26 light years for a parsec. As an example, the apparent magnitude of Sirius, where Sirius is currently at, which is somewhere around eight and a half light years, is a minus 1.42. But if we then take Sirius and put it 10 parsecs away, then the apparent magnitude would only read to be 1.24, uh, a positive 1.24, which means that is the absolute magnitude of the star Sirius. Now, how do we calculate the absolute magnitude? Because essentially we can't pick up a star and move it 10 parsecs away. That's impossible, of course. Well, we have an equation. The equation reads that the absolute magnitude is equal to minus 2.5 times the log of the ratio of the luminosity of the star divided by a base luminosity. That base luminosity is 3.0128 times 10 to the 28 watts. All right, let's now measure or calculate the absolute magnitude of the Sun? Well, the equation says it's minus 2.5 times the log of the luminosity of the star. In, in the Sun, it's 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts, and we divide that by the base luminosity of 3.0128 times 10 to the 28 watts, and with a calculator, we can figure that out. And this is indeed log base 10, not log base e. So uh, 3.8 e to the 26 divided by 3.0128 e to the 28. We take the log of that and multiply it times 2.5 negative, and we get 4.75. So the absolute magnitude for the sun is equal to, what did I say, 4.75, yes, about 4.75. We know it's around 4.8, but hey, that's a pretty good calculation based upon the equation. Just to see what it would be like for Regal. Now, of course, Regal is a tough one to work with because the, hmm, the luminosity Regal is not absolutely determined. But I've seen estimates anywhere from about 40,000 to about 110,000, I think, times the luminosity of the, uh, of the sun. So let's take, I think the latest number that I've looked at was 41,000, so let's use that. So the absolute uh, value, or the absolute magnitude for Regal is minus 2.5 times the log of the luminosity of the, of the, uh, of the star. Now Regal is, let's say 41,000 times, so we go 41,000 times the luminosity of the sun, which is 3.8, times 10 to the 26th, all divided by the base luminosity of 3.0128 times 10 to the 28th. And again, it all depends upon the values that we use, and you'll see different values from different sources, even for the luminosity of the sun. So we have 41,000 times 3.8 e to the 26th, divide that by 3.0128 e to the 28th, take the log of that, and then multiply that times 2.5 negative, and we get minus 6.78. So that would be equal to minus 6.78, which is indeed fairly close to what we believe to be the absolute luminosity of Regal. So this is how we do that. This is the calculation that we use. Gives you an approximate value, close, not the exact value, because in astronomy, it's hard to come by exact values, but now at least you know that we use the HR diagram to determine the luminosity of the star, then we throw that into this equation to calculate the absolute value of the star, the absolute magnitude of the star. And now, once we have the absolute magnitude and we have the apparent magnitude, because we just use the different filters, we calculate the apparent magnitude of the star, 
and then we combine the two to calculate the distance. So that comes next on our next video, where we'll finally show you how to calculate the distance to a star. And that is how it's done. I did it starting from this point on. <laughs> so yeah, I did it where I showed in kind of in a roundabout way, but the way that it makes it under understandable how we actually calculate the distance to stars. Once you know the apparent and the absolute magnitude, but this shows you how to get to the absolute magnitude of a star. So that's why there's a little bit more to it than meets the eye.